Hi, I'm Debbie with Decone Designs. I bring you creative adventures to inspire and encourage you to have your own creative adventures too. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit that notifications bell so you'll know every time I post a new video. Also, please go on over to my blog at my website at decondesigns.com. Sign up for emails so that you can be notified every time that I post a new creative adventure. Thank you. So today's creative adventure is all about the top 10 quilting tools that I use every day in my quilting journey. I love these tools. First, a disclaimer. I'm not paid by anyone to say this. This is not a sponsored video. And at this time, I am not affiliated with any retailer of any sort. These are only tools that I have found through trial and error over the past couple of years of quilting that work for me. I think you'll find the 10th one to be quite a, a bit of a surprise. So stay tuned. Let's get started. Before I get into the list, I just want to emphasize that you should use what you have first and then shop local. Shop your mom and pop quilt store, your local hardware store, and any uh, local big box retailer near you. First up is the magnetic pin holder. I got this idea, I think, from Karen Brown of Just Get It, Get it Done Quilts, so check out her videos whenever you have a moment. The magnetic pin holder is actually used for screws. You can get it at any automotive or uh, probably a lumber yard would have it, any place that sells screws. Um, it's a magnetic screw holder, but I use it for pins. It works great for me. You can also buy sewing related ones, but they're double or triple the price. So this inexpensive magnetic uh, pin holder works great for me. The next one I want to tell you about is the Crafter Square Craft Clamps. These are pink clamps that I found at my local dollar store. They are easy to use and just the right size for uh, holding my fabric pieces together for a particular block or for holding my uh, alphabet labels together when I'm getting ready to label my fabrics. They also work well for holding the corners when I'm binding on a quilt or on a table runner. They work great. I love these clamps. They're very inexpensive. The third thing that I use regularly is the Diagonal Seam Tape by Cluck Cluck Sew. I use it for marking on my sewing machine, the regular quarter inch seam. I also use it, of course, for making the diagonal seams when you're making flying geese, half square triangles, and snowballing corners. This really makes it quick and easy, and if it's a fairly small uh, block, I don't even have to pin. The diagonal seam tape I had to order online from Missouri Star Quilt Company. I could not find it at any local quilting or fabric store, but it is very inexpensive. The fourth item that I really like is my Fisker's Rotary Cutting Mat. When you go to buy a mat, please make sure it's at least 18 by 24. That will allow you to cut fat quarters uh, easily or, or even yardage without too much trouble. If you have room for a larger mat, say 24 or 30 by 36, that would be awesome, but at least 18 by 24. Please make sure that there are dots or lines at the quarter inch marks. I have used other rotary cutting mats by other name brands and they did not have that and I found myself quite frustrated. Also, you'll probably want to make sure that the mat is double-sided and in colors or a color that you enjoy looking at regularly. The next item on my top 10 list is the Ulfa Splash Rotary Cutter. I found this one by um, looking through videos with Missouri Star Quilt Company and several other online quilters use this particular brand of rotary cutter as well. I have tried other name brand rotary cutters and they did not feel well or I had difficulty removing the uh, cutting blade. For mine, what I like the best are several things. One, I love the colors. They have it in my favorite color, which is teal. It's easy to grip and uh, is comfortable in my hand. And best of all, it's easy to change the blade. Number six on my list is the Fisker's Thread Snips. I saw Donna Jordan of Jordan Fabrics using some snips in several of her videos, and so I investigated and found these Fisker ones, which I really like. 
I find snips much easier to use than small pairs of scissors. The action is easier on my hands and uh, quicker to use. The next item on my top 10 list is clear plastic bins. Now you can get these clear bins um, at the dollar store, which is where I get mine, or you can get them at any of your regular um, big box retailers such as Target and Walmart also carry them. I use them for several things. One, I use them to store my potential projects. When I buy a layer cake or some yardage, I put it into the plastic bin and label it. I also use it for projects in progress and keep my leftovers in there all contained in one place until I'm totally done with the quilt or table runner or other project. I also use it for storing scraps and I sort those bins by um, color families. The last thing I use my clear bins for is to store folded yardage. That keeps things neat. I can see through the bin easily and I also label the outside and I can quickly change the label whenever I need to reuse the bin. The next item on my top 10 list is the sewing machine lighting that I found to light up my brother sewing machine. The light that it came with is not very bright and this was recommended by several other quilters, I believe including the Quilting Marine when he was using his brother sewing machine. I had to find it on Amazon. It is possible you could find it at um, some big box retailers, but I had no luck there. The lighting is inexpensive and does a great job. The next item on my top 10 list is my sewing mat and tool holder. Now, to be honest, I didn't have to buy this one. I made it. I made it by modifying a Missouri Star Quilt Company pattern and video that uh, Jenny did and I modified it to suit my needs. There will be an upcoming video where I'll make a new one because as you can see from the uh, photos, mine is well loved and well used and it's time for a new one. The last item on my list, you might be a bit surprised. It is light tack painters tape. In particular, I use the Scotch Expressions masking tape. There is another light uh, tag painter's tape on the market with another brand. You could certainly try that. One of the reasons I use the Scotch brand is because of the colors. They used to have an orange, which is what I used quite a bit, and now they have a mint version, which I will be using. I've also used regular painter's tape as well. Here are the many things that I use light tack painter's tape for. First, I put a piece on the back of my quilt rulers to make them less slippery when I'm measuring fabric. Next, I use it to identify my rulers. If I'm going to sew with a friend or at a retreat, I put a piece of tape on it and write my name or initials, and that helps me to quickly identify which rulers are mine. I also use pieces of this painter's tape to label my plastic bins, as you could see in my previous photo about the bins. That makes it quick and easy to remove the labels and put new ones on whatever I need to. I also use the light tack painter's tape when I'm marking, marking fabric lines for quilting on uh, my domestic machine. Another thing I use the painter's tape for is to uh, label my stacks of rows of blocks when I'm putting together a quilt. I've laid it out and I stack each row up and then on the top uh, block of each row, I label it row one, row two, row three, and so on. It makes it easy to remove, but it stays and I don't poke myself because I'm not using a pin. The next thing I use it for is to cover the edge between my sewing machine and the ex table extension. Sometimes the fabric tends to get caught on that little ledge, so just um, a piece of painter's tape over that area helps the fabric to flow smoothly as I'm sewing. I do the same thing to cover the ledge where the throat plate meets the, the housing on my machine for the same reason. Last but not least, I use it for making a sewing ledge so that I can have accurate quarter inch seams. This idea came from Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. She advises all new sewers to go ahead and stack up three or four uh, pieces of painter's tape and then align them exactly on the quarter inch mark on your sewing machine so that when you sew, you don't have to work so hard to get your quarter inch seam. You simply uh, butt that uh, seam edge, uh, that fabric edge up against the ledge and 
allow your fabric to flow under the needle. That keeps your seam neat and accurate. Now for an update on the pattern available in my shop. If you'd like a free table runner pattern called Garden Petals, go to my blog at dconedesigns.com to download your free pattern in the Patterns tab. I'd love for you to make it and then email me a picture of your wonderful table runner. One last announcement. Here's a sneak peek of my upcoming new pattern called Double Framed Fun. This pattern will be fast, versatile, easy, and it is jelly roll and charm pack friendly. It will be available October 2021. So I invite you to stay tuned for my upcoming pattern. It will be for sale in my shop at dconedesigns.com. I hope you've enjoyed my top 10 list. Please like and subscribe the video and please leave me a comment that tells me what is your favorite quilting tool.